So, today we're going to take a look at something that doesn't get that much attention in the PHP world, and that is the data structures included in the standard PHP library. Now, the reason most of the PHP developers don't uh, use them is because PHP arrays are actually pretty good at emulating the most important of those, like uh, you have your hash map as a key value storage, you can use arrays for that, you can use arrays as a queue, you can use them as a stack, you can obviously use them as an, as, as an array. So also, uh, but all of this doesn't mean that they're uh, using uh, arrays to emulate these data structures is the, always the best way to go since obviously it can't beat the actual data structure that was designed for a specific problem. So we're going to take a look at these data structures that uh, were defined here and see how they apply uh, to just using arrays. So the first one is the SPLW linked list. And um, first we'll have to take a look at what a linked list is. It's basically uh, a structure that consists of three fields. You have your value, this is this middle node, and then you have two other nodes that are pointers to the previous and the next node. So every a node in the W linked list knows its predecessor and the successor and has a value. It is why it's great is uh, you can easily add an item to such a list at the end or at the beginning with pretty much no performance uh, hit. And uh, uh, since of adding an item is just adding uh, a node and assigning two pointers. And also uh, another great part, a uh, uh, great thing is you can iterate in both directions. You can go, f uh, you know, th this way on the list, and then you can go back. And then the other thing is it's it, avo it avoids the common pitfall of the arrays that, uh, and that is resizing. Uh, so. Obviously, with a list, it's easy. Uh, every time you want to add an, a new item to the list, it's just being added at the tail here, and nothing else has to be modified. And with arrays, it's usually not the case, because an array actually um, has to cope with resizing, because how most languages implement arrays is that they have a, a set capacity. So let's say when you create an array, it can hold a maximum of 10 items. Uh, but then behind the scenes, uh, when you add items to the array, the, the, it's always been resized to allow for a larger capacity. But uh, resizing this array means that uh, you obviously spend some time actually copying values to the bigger array, and also you uh, waste a lot of memory, and especially, let's say, uh, you had the capacity of like 500 items, and now you added 500 plus one item. So the array increases in size by two to amortize future additions. So now uh, your capacity is 1000 items, but you only store 501 item in it and you're wasting like 50% of the memory at this point. So um, sadly since PHP is a, a dynamically typed language, a lot of uh, these performance improvements that uh, uh, W-linked list and this classic data structure would bring aren't that noticeable because they, you, you, you cannot allocate the memory in the, the fixed intervals because you don't know what you're going to get. So, but you have, we're still going to see some improvements. So, let's say, for example, uh, we have this test case. I'll actually just remove some of the runtime from it. Uh, maybe a bit less like this. So let's say you have uh, an array and we're inserting 15,000 items into it one by one. And then we have a W link list where we do the same, inserting items to it one by one. So now let's see how uh, the memory is being distributed. All right, so you can see here that the uh, W link list pretty much saved here 75% of memory. And I think if I tweak these numbers just a bit, uh, I can actually get this to be a 50% difference. Let's try 20,000. Oh, see, I'm getting closer. It's just some more tweaking and uh, you can get this to a 50% difference. And yeah, 
Again, that, that means just by using a list instead of an array, you're actually uh, saving memory. Uh, now, uh, if you go, if you get these numbers very high, you will actually notice that uh, a doubly linked list when inserting performs worse than the array, which is weird for, to me for some reason, but probably there is some optimization technique going on behind the array. But if your number of items is not that huge, you can uh, the memory improvement is much more noticeable than the performance, the real performance hit. Um, now the the linked list on its own can emulate uh, the queue and the stack, but PHP actually has separate classes for those. Um, now let's actually try and do something with an array and then do something with a stack. Uh, now we're actually going to be trying measuring performance. So let's say I have an array, and then I want to uh, push uh, 100 items into it for all right. And then I want to pop them one by one, which is kind of how uh, the stack works. You know, you have your first, first and last out. So now I place all the items. Now to actually pop them from the array, I'm going to do this while uh, uh, a array pop a. Hmm. Something like this. Actually, I can even do it like so. I don't spend time checking if the array is empty. So I'll do it like do while uh, dollar wall. All right. So until we get to the last one, all right. I'm just gonna really quickly run this to see if I didn't screw up. I didn't. All right. So now I'm going to uh, time it. Mm. Oh, come on. All right. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the SPL stack. <laughs> so $A is an SPL stack. So this is probably going to be push, push, $I, and this is going to be $A pop. All right? So, wait, call to uh, undefined function as pure step on our new. Great. Alright, so we can't see much of an improvement here. Let's add maybe more items to the test. Or I could actually do micro time. But on, it's not that reliant on Windows. Let's add some more. Well, oh, uh, <laughs> well, this is weird PHP, right? Um, so for some reason, the PHP SPL stack is actually slower than using an array. Well, it's the same thing. Well, that's weird. Uh, kind of defeats the actual point of having, uh, well, it's implemented as a double linked list, so yeah. Uh, I guess the, uh, the only reason for having it is if you want to pass it to a class and have some interface that you don't really want to allow random access, I guess. Uh, yeah, really not impressed with the, this implementation. All right. Well, the SPL queue is kind of going to be the same thing as the stack, because it's uh, also implemented on a double linked list just from a different end. 
so we can kind of just skip this one um yeah all right well the only thing yeah you, know, you can't really do anything as well so disappoint really expected it to have a uh, better performance um all right actually let's uh, while we're on the subject let's uh Try and see the memory or usage, but it's going to be uh, the same since it's a double interest. So yeah, you just skip it. Well, basically, the, the bottom line is uh, human memory kind of lose performance on both the stack and queue. Uh, you can keep them for an interface because it kind of defines more what the thing is actually doing. But yeah, that's kind of it. Um, all right. Let's take a look at the SPL heap. Now, this is one thing you cannot really do with an array efficiently. So, what the SPL heap is, it's basically a way uh, of having an, an array of items that are automatically sorted as they are being inserted. So, instead of uh, sorting items uh, after you inserted them all you can you insert items one by one and they end up sorted if you get them uh, from the list and that is really nice uh, because first thing if you pass an SPL heap uh, around the code you can always be sure that the values there are always sorted so you don't have to have for example uh, if you have a method that would always accept uh, that has to accept a sorted array it's actually better to say that it accepts a heap and then you are 100% sure that it's going to be sorted so using it is super simple and now we're actually getting to uh, the useful things territory so uh, we have the SPL heap and now uh, we have a value all right all right. Oh, that's an abstract one. Sorry. There's two other ones. There's a max heap and the min heap, and those are based on whether you want to, to, to which way you want to have a thing sorted. So let's try SPL min heap. So the minimal item is going to be first, and then we'll add uh, heap insert and just say random numbers. I'll, I'll just insert a bunch so that we see four. And let's say 11 and 2, and then let's go for each. Uh, each dollar heap as dollar item. It, uh, echo dollar item. Looks like that. All right. All right. So you see now that and it's actually um, the inserting into a heap is actually efficient because it's um, it's pretty much as efficient as quicksort just without the O N uh, squared worst case. Uh, so you can use this actively and you always get the uh, assorted array. Now I think you can also uh, well you should be able to. Anyway, let's go there. Up, 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 up. Yes. You can, uh, if you extend an SPL heap, you can actually define your own uh, compare function that's going to compare values. And the idea behind it is you can sort different, uh, for example, or RAM entities based on some criteria. So for, let, let's have a nice example. Imagine that you have items coming from two tables and the tables may, may be sorted, may not be sorted, but you have items coming from two tables or two different data sources that have uh, the same kind of items, but you want to have them sorted in the end. But the list, you know, can always, uh, always grows on, can be modified. So it's actually easier to uh, just create a heap and put them into the, this heap and then get, uh, get them from there when needed and insert new items as needed instead of uh, sorting the entire array every time you want to get the minimum item so the, the heap is actually a uh, one of the data structures that is quite often used in things well mostly like when you have a sorting or uh, we're going to get to a priority queue which is a really nice thing um, 
uh, and but it's used of, usually in like algorithms that deal with like graph traversals and such. So um, now this one is really nice. Then the next one is the SPL priority queue. The priority queue is actually a heap of items, but these items are sorted based uh, on uh, the priority that they were, are being inserted as. So let's take a look and, and this is really useful for example the first thing that pops to mind when you think about it is like a job queue right let's say you have uh, a job listener um, that accepts jobs but some jobs obviously and it uh, executes them one by one but some jobs may have a higher priority than the others and when you insert them you actually want to make sure that those jobs get to be executed first so and that these are actually super easy to do because look we can actually have this uh, heap let's uh, we, we already have the numbers so now let's add some items apple uh, I sorry SPL priority queue SPL priority queue and you have let's say apple with a priority six banana with the priority four, uh, there's gonna be a cow with the priority 11, and there's going to be a minor dog with a priority of two. So, right now, see, they went in the uh, You have to remember here that it goes actually from top to bottom, so it goes from a uh, cow to apple to banana to dog do, do, to dog. And but this is also uh, dynamic. So let's say here, uh, as as is the heap. But actually, let's say the the heap uh, was the matter the uh, top. The heap top. That is going to be a cow. And I will say I inserted something that is better than the cow. Insert. Uh, Barrel with 13. Now I echo top and it's going to be a sparrow. Uh, cow sparrow. I right, uh, should have added the book slash n. Oh, come on. I cannot type this. All right. One and then two. And then um, you can actually, in one method, just take the item from the top so like it's going to be i think it's extract extract and then we're going to extract the another one so we're going to have yeah see cow then there is sparrow but we already extracted the sparrow from the array so now the cow jumped back to top and now the cow is at the top so um this one is actually really useful when you have a dynamic array and you always have to make sure that it's being sorted at any point of time it's really great um Great. Now we're almost at the end. Now uh, the SPL fixed array. That is kind of a weird thing. Uh, it 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 just allows you uh, to have a fixed uh, length of items. And uh, but as the documentation here says, that it allows a faster array implementation. So that is actually what we are going to benchmark now, because. Uh, the, the double-ended queue has already surprised me. So now, here, uh, uh, no, this is before. Just, I want to go to the first example. All right. All right, let's say, but, but here I'm actually interested in time. And time. All right, now, so this is us processing 20,000 items with an array, and we're going to do the same thing and process them with an SPL fixed array. SPL fixed array <laughs> of size 20,000. All right, and there's probably a push method here. All right. Now let's see how much faster is it. Great. Well, I didn't guess the method. Um, 
with the method key next value to raise its size offsets are obviously uh, Hmm. Right. Now, see, they are uh, right both fast. Now, let's add some challenge. Alright, I, I ran out of memory then. Alright, I'll reduce it a bit. Ah. Oh, come on, I want to catch a difference here. All right, well, it doesn't seem that much of an improvement, to be honest. Um, hmm. All right, well, maybe. Let's do this. Uh, that, that will not happen. Help. All right. Let's maybe. Uh, I, I'm gonna do this with micro test. Usually, micro time is not really working well on Windows. We will see actually. Ah, yes. Yeah, see, so it actually got minus. Uh, meaning that micro time kind of crap. So um, yeah. Uh, actually, the, the SPL fixed array seems actually slower, to be honest. All right, we'll uh, do this. We'll do this three times. So this way I don't run out of memory, but I get to benchmark something. So each array is going to be created three times. And then I'm going to get my memory usage from it. Right? Let's see. Alright, well, 3 was uh, a really low number. Like, how about 300? Not really. Are you kidding? There's going to be no difference. Ah, pff, sorry. I'm just being stupid. I assigned the same variable. Well, load me. All right, sorry. <laughs> All right, now, actually, three hundred was. Probably a huge mistake. Let's actually go with three because this is going to be like a three second difference. All right. Oh, see, see, it starts to show. Um, let's actually get it up to ten. I'll probably have to wait like 20 seconds to get the results now, but I actually want to see how much of a difference in terms of performance this is. 12, all right, versus... Eight, all right, so basically you have like what, like 50% uh, improvement. Um, hmm. So that, that, it's actually nice. But you have to also to keep in mind that what we inserted like 10 million items. So, uh, yeah. It, well, it makes sense sometimes, I guess. Um, like maybe if you are creating these arrays a lot, 
or you have a lot of items returning arrays that have a fixed amount I mean it definitely looks uh, since the um, a signature is the same it definitely looks worse of it to actually get um, to return it if you actually uh, know the count of the items but the huge downside to this is that probably you cannot uh, oh this is going to be true well I'm just going to show because I know it's true the, the all the uh, awesome array functions that we have are obviously not are going to work uh, not going to work with this so yes so kind of you can't use MapReduce with it kind of the data structure is useless really um, all right so um, let's get to the to the last one and that is the SPL object storage and the SPL object storage is actually comes uh, useful really rarely but when it comes it's really handy and basically what it allows you is uh, you can map objects uh, to objects right so because usually with arrays all you can do is map like keys that are string and uh, numeric to objects and data here you with the SPL object storage you can actually use an object uh, as a key it's kind of weird how it's handled but let's try all right so, uh, so we'll have a key is going to be new uh, std class actually I, I can just do it as an object so. Uh, um, uh, object. I'm going to have, uh, let's say, uh, array that says uh, I'm a key, and this is a value. Well, all right. So now I have two objects. And I can say dollar a dollar key equals dollar wall. And with a normal array, it would just die. Now it doesn't. And I can iterate. And actually, iterating these arrays is kind of tricky because you always iter iterate it as keys. So uh, print r dollar key. So when you for each, you don't actually for each the values, you for each the keys. So see, I'm a key, but and then you can actually print the value a dollar key. Now this is really nice because you can, um, in many cases, it actually makes sense to have a map from one object to another. For example, the the, the simplest version. Uh, you might have is mapping entities for example like you could map uh, you can have a special map from like children to their parents you could have a map from categories to items and usually people do it with IDs you so you would have a map of like a category ID to an item ID but in some cases when you don't have the ID or you want to map an array to an array and do weird stuff like that this is actually really useful and uh, the alternative to it is using two arrays and I think that is kind of how it's handled on uh, the background probably not <laughs> actually but uh, you, you can uh, have two arrays and use the key from one to access the key from another but this is a much more elegant way of doing this all right so now let's summarize uh, what you can actually want to use all right so the SPF uh, w linked list uses less memory and this goes for, for SPL stack and SPL queue because basically all three of these are exactly the same SPL W linked list, just renamed. Um, the, it wastes less memory, it takes a bit more time to process, 
you kind of if you have arrays that you only travel back and forth and memory can be a problem because there's a lot of them and you don't want to use 25% memory or like 50% memory because that's a lot it's like if you would have an application that would spike uh, to like 100 megabyte then you know with uh, no usual PHP arrays it would be 200 megabytes so uh, twice the memory and cheap right um, but uh, you have this big problem that the array functions don't work with those. So then you have the heap, which is an absolute, this is because it's an absolute jam. Like seriously, so if you, uh, you can use uh, any object with it, you can put items that uh, with your uh, priority, with your own priorities there. Actually, this is this for spell heap, max heap, and heap, and priority queue. You ensure that they are always sorted and you get them in an efficient manner, it's like uh, logarithmic time, so that, that these four are great. SPL fixed array is really meh, I mean there is a performance improvement, but the downside being that you cannot use array function with it is really uh, meh, and you have to have the array set. I think the bigger benefit from it comes of actually limiting the amount of items that you can have. So like, let's say, um, if you actually want to have an array where you can have only a specific amount of items, this is a nice way of limiting it. And the SPL object storage is less of a gem than a heap, but it, uh, it can come handy in a lot of situations when you ac actually need to map one item one item to another like in case or, or an array of items to another array of items like in the case of let's say ORMs. So uh, definitely check the object storage and the heap out. Uh, they will make your life easier and uh, that's it for now. Uh, if I, after that, I, I'll probably, if we continue, I'll make a video covering all these, the iterators here, which is, uh, which are really nice and allow you to do a lot of stuff that would usually require a lot of cycles and uh, even some tricky code. So, thanks for uh, listening. Bye-bye.